Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Premiere Pro video editing tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Now today we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna create a double animated shape mask transition effect. I'm not even sure what to call it. It's just like a geometric design, but the beauty of this effect is when you create it, you can really do it with any shape you want. We're gonna use a little sort of rounded rectangle, but you can use any shape you want and create all sorts of different effects. The color is editable. Everything about it's editable. It's gonna be really cool to do in Premiere Pro, and I really think you're gonna find it useful. Now, if you find this tutorial useful, if you enjoy it, please make sure you hit the little like button. It really helps things out. And also, subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video editing or Premiere Pro or video in general tutorial in the future. I guess that's it. Let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. So first things first, let me just show you what the effect looks like. I'm going to take this back to one and here's the effect that we're going to create. Boom, just like that. So this would be an effect that you could use to kick off a, a movie or a video you're working on, probably not a movie, but you know, a, a little video you're working on or uh, just to transition between two different types of uh, two different types of shots that you have. So what I want to do is I want to drag my horse riding clip onto uh, onto my sequence. I'm going to drag it out here and look, it's going to say, hey, clip mismatch warning. It's not going to match. I could change the sequence setting. I'm going to say keep the existing settings because I set up this uh, sequence here. If I go up to sequence, sequence settings, I gave it 60 frames per second just to make my animation a little bit smoother. I'm only filming these tutorials at 30 frames per second, so we probably can't even appreciate exactly what uh, what's going on here. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to go with 60 frames per second. There's really nothing wrong with doing 30 frames per second or 24 frames per second. I mean, if that's especially if that's what your video is, you might be locked in using that. But the higher frame rate, the smoother your graphics and animations and everything will be. But, you know, 60 frames per second can also kind of make your video look a little wonky and, and like cheap. I don't know how to describe it. So first things first, let's um, move this horse riding clip out about five seconds. So I'm just going to click up here in my time code. I'm going to type in 500. It's going to take me to five seconds. And I'm going to drag the horse riding clip and let it click to there. I'm going to move all the way back, uh, my playhead, all the way back to the beginning. And I'm going to come down here to the bottom of my project bin. And I'm going to choose new item. Now from new item, I'm going to choose color mat. And I'm going to make this color mat. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to make the color mat solid white. Because I want my opening frame to be white. And I'll call this white uh, background or something. It can be whatever you want. And then I'm going to drag and drop this right here in between my the beginning of my video and where the horse riding actually begins. And we can shorten and tweak this and adjust it later. It really doesn't matter all that much. But before we do any of the animating mass goodness we want to sort of affect our initial clip here so I'm gonna select this horse riding clip and then I'm gonna come over here to effects right right here I'm gonna select my effects panel I'm gonna choose video effects and I'm going to go color correction now what I want to do here is I'm just gonna double click on brightness and contrast it's gonna add a brightness contrast adjustment I'm gonna boost the brightness to 10 and I'm gonna reduce contrast negative 35 so really wash the picture out I'm gonna hit this little tiny arrow there and just twirl brightness contrast up into itself then I'm gonna go to channel mixer and this is where things kinda get fun because you can mix and match red red green green and blue blue as much as you want and get any color you want I happen to know that by removing all the blue it's gonna give the image a very strong yellow color cap so I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to set that to zero, hit tab, and you can see we have this really strong yellow color cast. I like that. That's exactly what I want. We're going to roll with the strong yellow color cast for our underlying video. Now I'm going to do something that might not make a lot of sense. I'm going to create what's called a title. So I'm going to come down here for new items, and I'm going to choose title. And here in the title, I'm going to call this mask hyphen shape, and I'm going to choose OK. Now, again, as I say often when working in the title editor in Premiere Pro, it can be wonky at times, it can crash, so make sure you save your document early and often. A little command or control S never hurt anyone. In fact, it'll save you a heck of a lot of time. All right, I'm going to choose this rounded corner rectangle tool, and I'm gonna drag out a rounded corner rectangle. Hold down my shift key to just give me a perfect square. And with my selection tool, I'm gonna to select that rounded corner rectangle, and I wanna change the width and height. Over here in the properties panel, see I've got width and height, and they're 425 by 425. I think I want to set this, eh, it's close to being the right size. Let's just knock it down to like 400. I think just a little smaller might be a little better. Yeah, something like that's cool. And we're going to come down to the fillet size or fillet size. I'm assuming it's fillet. And it's 37.5. Um, I'm going to reduce this to like 15. I think that's going to give us, this is sort of the control of the roundedness of the corner. See, that's much better. 15% on a 400 by 400 rounded rectangle in Premiere Pro. 
I'm also going to go ahead and just fill this with black because it just makes me feel better about the situation. And I'm going to come over here and I've got two alignment options. I'm going to align it to the vertical and horizontal centers just to get it right in the middle. We're going to be moving it around, but let's just begin in a good place here in the very middle. And then we can move up here and just close our title editor. We've, we've created that title. Now I'm thinking about this and I really want the white background behind my video. So I'm going to drag this horse uh, riding video up on top and I'm going to drag the white background out to there. That's pretty cool. Now what I want to do is add my mask shape title right here above my horse riding layer. You can see it doesn't look like anything fancy because it's really not anything fancy. Select the mask shape uh, video clip on your timeline. So the mask shape object clip there. And we want to go ahead and animate this rectangle so it shoots up from the bottom to the middle of our document. So what I want to do here is... I want to, this is the ending frame. This is like where the animation is going to end. So I need to decide how far do I want this to go. I want it to be uh, about half a second. So one second is 60 frames. So we're going to go to the 30 frame mark here. There's 30 frames. Great. And what this is doing is sure it's 30 frames down here in the timeline, but it's also 30 frames up here where I can go over here to my position options and I can say, hey, Drop a keyframe right there. And then I will move all the way back over here to my opening frame. And I'm going to increase the uh, where this slides along the Y axis. I'm going to increase it until it disappears off the bottom of my screen. So now if I play through this, I can see that the shape just slides right up from the bottom. We've created a little animation. That's not good enough though. I want to right click on this keyframe and I'm going to choose tem temporal interpolation and I'm going to choose ease out. So we're going to ease this out. It's just going to change the way the animation looks a little bit. Very cool. And next what we want this to do is we, we simply want it to hold this position for 20 frames. So to make sure I'm doing this accurately, I'm going to make sure I put my playhead up here between the two keyframes. And I'm going to hit this little button here, go to next keyframe, all right? And then I can simply come down here and say, well, what's 20 frames from here? Well, it's 50 frames, of course, right? So there's 50 frames, great. Now at this point, I want the scaling to change. So I'm going to hit this little stopwatch here, turn on the animation, and we're going to animate this from 100% scale to 500% scale over the course of a half second. So once more, we're going to come out here and we're going to move our time or our playhead, excuse me, forward by 30 frames. So that's to 120. There we go. 120. And here I'm going to simply set my scale to 500 and that's 500%. And now everything's solid black. So let's play through this one more time. It shoots up, hangs, and then it zooms. All right. Now we probably want this to ease as well. So let's eat, let's select this keyframe, right click, and I'm going to choose ease in. And then this frame here, right click and ease that out. Let's try that one more time. Boom. And you can see just a smooth, a smooth zoom of that shape. And when we make that the mask, you can see sort of how the underlying video will be revealed. I'm going to save my project once more. And now what we're going to do is add a kind of a fancy effect to this. We're going to come down to our effects panel. I'm going to collapse video effects and I'm going to search using a little search field here. I'm going to search for twirl. We have a couple twirls here, twirl in and twirl out. I'm going to choose twirl in and I'm going to, well, I don't want to double click it. I'm going to choose twirl in here and I'm going to drag it and drop it up here in my effect controls panel. And now if we play through our mask shape, you can see how it's spinning as it comes through here and then animates out because we have this whole twirl thing going on down here where we've got some pretty advanced animation happening. Now, one of the things that I want to change is this slider right here, this twirl radius action. I'm going to bring my, uh, you can see how like, it's almost like a saw blade, those little like legs that are whipping out. It's just too much. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select both of these keyframes right here, that keyframe and that keyframe, select them one at a time and I'm just going to delete them. I'm going to delete that keyframe and I'm going to delete that keyframe and I'm going to increase this slider all the way to 100 because I just want this to be a nice soft little shape that has a little bit of whip to it. Not anything crazy. Boom. Just like that. And by the way, you can reduce the number of revolutions that happen by simply selecting this number up here. So if we come back here to the beginning, right, you can see this says 4x 0, 0.0. If you set this to 10x, it's going to spin 10 times or if you want to slow it down, set it to 2x, something like that. And we can go in, play it, and you can see it's a much slower spin. Boom, right out. Looks great. Now, if you want the spinning to take place over a longer period of time, maybe you want the spinning to continue a little bit longer as that shape animates, simply drag this keyframe up to about there. And let's see what this looks like. Keep going. Bam. Spins right out. Looks pretty good. Cool. I think I'm going to take this back to at least three. I'm probably going to go 4x again on the revolutions just to keep it at the default. 
uh, and you can see spin, 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 boom, and it's going to create that really cool transition for us. So how do we actually create the mask now? Well, it's not that difficult. Select the horse riding clip on your timeline, and uh, we're going to just click the little X up here to get rid of the twirl search uh, query that we, we just sent. And we're going to go here to video effects, keying, and we're going to choose the track mat key. We're going to drag this up and drop it in the effect controls panel to add it to this uh, this video clip here. And what we're going to do, you can see, by the way, that little leg of the shape is sticking up in the bottom of the video. So we can go to mask shape. We would come out to the, which one is it? It's, it's this keyframe here. No, it's not. It's the very beginning keyframe. Beginning keyframe. And we can just increase how far down the shape begins. We can drag it until we definitely can't see it. There we go. So now it's going to come out of nowhere. That's great. Let's go back to the horse riding clip here. We've got this track mat key and really all we have to do is tell it, look, hey, mat using video track either three, four or five. Well, video track three is where we have our animated mask that we want to use. So let's go video three and you can see it looks like no videos here. But if we play through this, Sure enough, our mask appears and does its thing and spins and reveals the whole video. Really cool. Now things are getting exciting. Now we got to find a way to double up the animation and get rid of the color cast. This is where things are fun. So we're going to duplicate this clip up to video track number four here. Uh, so hold down your alter option key. Just simply drag that clip straight up. You want it to begin at the same moment. So both this clip and the clip that's being masked down here move in unison. I'm going to select this clip here. And we're going to get rid of, first and foremost, the track key. Get rid of that so it's not being masked or attempted to be masked by anything. We're going to get rid of the channel mixer because we got to get rid of that yellow color cast. And we can also get rid of the brightness contrast because that set us up for that serious color cast, which is not really what the video looks like. We're going to trim this video in about 20 frames. So we're going to trim it to maybe right about there, right? And I'm going to take and just trim it in nice and easy. I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit. And now all we really have to do is take that same exact mask, hold down our Alter Option key, and duplicate it up and align it with where this next clip begins. Now, you're going to see here that it's not quite that easy, right? Because we still need to set up the mask. But we can do that pretty easily. Really, what I want to change is the scaling size where this shape begins in terms of its, its uh, initial size. So I'm gonna come up here. Remember these two keyframes here are the keyframes that are associated with my scaling. So I need to select the first keyframe. So I'm gonna hit this little icon here, go to next keyframe. And I'm just gonna cut the size in half. I'm gonna set the scaling to 50. It's still gonna scale up to 500% because it still needs to fill the entire document and reveal the full real color, real contrast version of the video. All right, so let's let's just do that, and we're going to go back to horse riding. We're going to add another track mat key to this new horse riding video track, and the mat in this case is going to be the video five layer. And let's just see what this looks like here. Let's play it. We'll probably need to adjust and tweak the timing a little bit. Let's see. So we play it. Boom, 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 boom. Actually, it looks pretty cool. Maybe what we want to do is not have. We don't want our colored version to spin in there as long. So all we have to do in that case is let it show up. So the positioning. The, the, we've got our top mask selected, right? This is the mask that's masking our good colored uh, footage, right? It's this mask right here in the middle. Mask shape, copy 01. So what we need to do is to get rid of that little like, oh, I'm hanging out spinning bit. We want it to take off right after the colored shape starts animating larger. So like right there, we want it to take off. We just simply need to move the scaling animation, right? The scaling animation is happening between those two keyframes. So drag a selection and grab both of those keyframes and just drag them right back to about right there. And let's try this now and see what the timing looks like. Boom, 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 boom. Just like that. And it quickly creates that transition effect, or it's a fast transition, I should say. It starts with a white screen, zip, 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 zip. And you have a beautiful new transition that you can use for whatever you like. And speaking of whatever you like, just as a one quick side note before I let you go, maybe you want to change the color of that underlying layer. Yellow is not what works for your project. Select that original horse riding layer, right? Come over here to your effect controls. You got your uh, channel mixer over here, right? We set that channel mixer up and you can say, ah, look, I'll uh, just make it a red effect. So I'll get rid of all the green. And there you go. Now it's a red effect. Uh, maybe you want it to have a little bit of green. So you can go and dump some blue in there and it's going to be more of like a pink effect. So you can go in and just mix those channel mixers as much or as little as you want and just 
begin creating all sorts of different color effects. And obviously, as you can see, we really layered this effect on very quickly and it was very easy to layer it together. So you could do multiple layers like this, uh, but also you could do something like just use a straight square, use a star, use all sorts of different shapes that are gonna pop up from the bottom, spin, and then boom, expand out to a much larger shape that then shows the video. And just imagine using that to get from one scene to the next, right? You're watching one piece of video, all of a sudden a little shape pops up with that video inside of it. It spins and just boom, expands to the whole video. Kind of a cool little transition effect, I think at least. Uh, so if you've enjoyed this one, again, remember, hit the little like button over there. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I love you guys so much, and I hope you're loving the content that's coming out. I actually hate using the word content because it feels very cheap. I hope you're enjoying the videos that are coming out, the education stuff that's coming out, uh, and all the fun that we're having putting this stuff together. So again, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, and for creating a shape animated mask transition effect in Premiere Pro, using all sorts of different effects from brightness contrast and channel mixer and the twirl in effect. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.